Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Corey Stern, and this is the Take Control of Your Health channel, where I am fully committed, I would say obsessively committed, to helping people learn about how they can stay safe and healthy in this world that we're living in, where a lot of bad guys want to steal your health and make you sicker, weaker, and stupider. So before we get into today's topic, which is food dyes, and this is a very important topic because food dyes are actually extremely toxic, I just want to talk a little bit about how, in general, how people get pulled into doing things, making choices about their health out of fear. And fear, you probably know this, fear is a very powerful motivator. And that is actually how most uh, advertising um, uh, inspires people to take action, right? Call to action, and it's usually out of fear. So right now we're seeing in this, uh, in this particular time of the world, this um, time of a pandemic, I'm gonna say pandemic, um, we're seeing a lot of people behaving out of fear. And people are afraid, basically they're afraid of dying, which is what it comes down to. So right now it's, it's an acute fear. It's in their face, it's, it's very real to them, um, and they're trying to not die. But we have all been affected by chronic fear over our lifetimes. And it's something very insidious. It's in TV commercials. It's in uh, all kinds of, of marketing people. Um, marketers basically scare you into doing things to protect your health. So some of us do things that are not that bad like let's say going to the store and buying vitamins um, because you read somewhere that if you don't take this particular vitamin you'll have a higher risk of getting sick and you just randomly go and buy this particular vitamin um, out of fear and hope that it will help you and other people do other things like take drugs and medications um, unfortunately, the conventional medical profession is very involved in using fear to, uh, shall we say, motivate people to take drugs. And in my practice, I hear story after story of patients who were intimidated or even threatened by their medical professional. If you don't take this medication, you're going to lose the use of your fingers or um, things like that. So I want to take the fear out of everything by giving you information. The more knowledge and the more awareness you have of the truth, the more responsibility you can take for yourself and your health and the more control you'll have over it. And when we talk about control, we're talking about the ability to make good decisions and choices with the information that you need to do so. Not random information, not information that comes from advertising, which as we all know, advertising is not true information. It is people selling you stuff. So to get into today's topics, just a little bit of background. Food dyes have been being used in food for centuries, um, dates back to ancient times, but our, the original dyes were made out of natural substances and were not necessarily harmful. But at some point in the uh, turn of the century, 20th century, late 1800s is when it started really. Um, food manufacturers decided that 
uh, these natural dyes were too expensive and it would be more cost effective to make synthetic dyes. So I did try digging into the history, you know, who was the first guide to make a synthetic guy and what company actually started using it. And I'm always looking for connections or motivation, like, are we being poisoned on purpose? Um, I didn't really find anything, doesn't mean it's not there, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it. However, what we do know is fast forward to today, the, the synthetic dyes being used in foods are mostly carcinogenic and cause a wide variety of health problems. So I just wanna go over some of it with you so that you can be very careful about what you're selecting. Now, the first thing that you need to know about food labels, if it has a label, it's not food. So again, the difference between processed product and food Food is things that grow on the ground, grow on a tree, or have a mother and are minimally processed. And anything else is what's known as a processed product. Now, the problem is that it can be a little tricky, right? So let's just talk about pickles for a minute, right? You think pickles are um, fall into the definition of food. Pickles are made out of little cucumbers and there are a vegetable and they're soaked in brine, which is salt water. It sounds innocent enough, right? But if you pick up a pickle jar, a lot of them have food dye in them, right? And what's made out of pickles relish also has food dye in it. Why do food companies use these dyes? It makes the food look more attractive. So studies have shown that brightly colored foods are stimulate a, a, um, a primitive uh, response in your brain um, to make you to make you want to eat it. And um, in nature, brightly colored foods generally are nutrient dense, like like berries and beets and radishes, and think of all these. These colorful foods, dark green leafy vegetables are all packed with nutrients. So now what food manufacturers do is they take something and turn it into a fake food and then put some color in it. There's also studies that show that the more variety of colors there are in foods, the more likely you are to eat more of it. So think about things like M&Ms and Skittles and candies that are multicolored. Right? You're actually going to eat more of them than if they were all brown. If all the M&Ms were brown, you would eat less M&Ms. So let me just talk about some of the various types of food coloring. Um, the one that I hate the most personally is caramel coloring. So caramel sounds like, again, it sounds something innocent because you know that there's such a thing as caramel candy and um, what we're talking about with the food coloring is not candy, it's toxic food coloring. And it is in dark colored sodas. I don't know that there's any dark colored sodas that don't have caramel coloring in them. So your Pepsis and your Cokes and your D D uh, Dr. Pepper and root beer, all those dark colored sodas have caramel coloring. The problem with caramel coloring is that the way that they make it, the process that they use, and they use ammonia to make it, there are various types of, there are ver various types of all of these colors, but the one that's most widely used is made with ammonia and the, the ammonia actually causes a cancer causing substance to form in the caramel coloring. Okay, so we're talking about soda and we're talking about, I have a list here because I don't want to forget anything. Oh, pancake syrup, your Aunt Jemima, your Log Cabin, your Mrs. Butterworth, those are all basically corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup with caramel coloring and artificial maple flavoring. I have found sadly that many people do not realize that those are not maple syrup. Maple syrup comes from a tree. Maple syrup is considered a food. It actually has nutrition in it. 
I'm not saying to drink a jar of it, but it does have some nutrients in it. Whereas these pancake, these fake pancake syrups are really, really toxic. And so many people eat them without thinking about it. Um, we also have, believe it or not, dark colored breads like pumpernickel have caramel coloring in them. Soy sauce, um, drinks, bottled coffee drinks, anything basically that's brown or dark brown, some salad dressing, some soup, some cereal, instant oatmeal, instant oatmeal, which you shouldn't be eating anyway. Um, some popcorn, like the, the popcorn that's um, sweet, like caramel popcorn, has caramel coloring in it. Bottled protein drinks, some protein bars, um, gravies, beef jerky, um, and then I mentioned salad dressings like brown ones, like balsamic vinaigrette, which you think of as being maybe a healthier version. So basically the bottom line is I can't, I can't isolate brands for you, but you need to read labels. You need to find, basically if you look for organic versions of these things, you're going to not find the caramel coloring in them. Um, and I just want to say that I looked up the ingredients of Diet Pepsi and I kind of knew this, but I was horrified all over again by seeing that the ingredients in Diet Pepsi is seltzer, um, uh, uh, aspartame, which we're going to do a whole show on aspartame, which is uh, equal, right? And then, um, and then caramel coloring and some phosphate, all toxic, all cancer causing and Jeez, I, there was a time when I used to drink that. I can't even believe that. I, I can't even imagine that I ever did that. And it's addictive, of course. Um, it has, you know, caffeine in it. It's addictive. All right, now let's talk about uh, FD&C yellow, number five dye, which is found in many, many popular candies and the Department of Health and Human Services says it's reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I don't want any amount of any carcinogenic substance in my body. If I have control over it and can avoid it, I'm not eating it, you know? And then the people that say, oh, it's just a little bit. Yeah, so you eat a little bit of a lot of this stuff, and then one day you wake up and you're sick, it was a little bit of that stuff on a lot of days. That's what it was. So let me just read you some of these candies. Um, and you have to make sure that if you have children that they're not eating this, okay? This applies to them as much as it does to you, especially them, because they are more vulnerable. So M&Ms, Jolly Ranchers, Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, Gummy Bears, Nerds, Jawbreakers, Mr. Good Bars, Butterfingers, Smarties, Pez, Pixie Sticks, Blow Pops, Tootsie Roll um, Pops, Candy Corn, Jelly Beans, um, Starburst, Atomic Fireball, uh, Peeps, Peeps, yeah, the cute little chickadees on Easter, Reese's Pieces, Cotton Candy, uh, Swedish Fish, Cadbury Eggs, Twizzlers, even potato chips, some potato chips and jams. Oh, and pet foods, let's not forget pet foods, okay? So please don't poison your animals, guys. You, you've got to apply what everything that I'm talking to you about for humans applies to animals. Animals need to eat real food also. Think about what they eat in the wild, that's what they should be eating. Okay, so like these kibbles and a lot of these, these popular pet foods are really like they're junk food. They're just junk food for animals. And there's a very high incidence of cancer in animals right now. And this is one of the reasons. Um, and the, the, this dye is also found in personal care products, shampoos and other cosmetics. These over-the-counter garbage vitamins, I call them, and medications. Now, one thing I want to say about medications, almost all medications have these toxic food dyes in them. Over-the-counter medications, prescription medications, a lot of them also have aspartame in them. Okay. Now, I suspect that a large number of, of bad reactions 
to medications are not necessarily from the drug itself, but from the, the these additives, these food dyes especially, and possibly a combination of the medication and the food dye. Are there any studies on whether or not the dyes they're putting in the tablets or the syrups, whatever, actually um, have an interaction with the drug itself? I don't, I doubt it, I doubt it. I didn't check, but I doubt it. So next we're gonna move on to, um, and by the way, FD and C yellow number five is banned in Austria and Norway, right? So we're gonna do a, a show on all the banned uh, substances in other parts of the world that are okay to use in the US. It's okay to kill us, but the rest of the world is smart enough not to do it. So we have blue number one, red number 40, red number three. We find these in canned fruits, in some yogurts and other cereals, um, um, and, and red colored um, uh, dressings like Catalina, berry flavored dressings. Oh, by the way, the yellow, not only in pickles and relish, but applesauce. There goes another example of something that seems like it might be kind of a food. You take an apple, you boil it, you puree it, you get applesauce. But no, they have to make it more yellow. So what do these food dyes cause in the body besides cancer? Um, well, they're definitely known to cause hyperactivity in children. A lot of people, it, they, call, they cause allergies. So you think you might think you have seasonal allergies. Um, why is your body reacting to something that's, that's not toxic like pollen? When you're putting all this garbage in your body, your immune system has a response to the garbage and then it, and then it over responds to incoming uh, benign substances like pollen. Uh, food dyes are also known to cause migraines, uh, fatigue, anxiety. Um, so basically the bottom line is they're really bad. You don't eat them. Start looking at labels. And my suggestion is if it has a label and there's more than one ingredient, don't eat it. So that's all I got for now, folks. I'll be doing another video soon covering more of these topics. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that, and share it with somebody that you think would benefit from this information. Remember, my only agenda here is to disseminate this information to help save lives and to help us be happier, more productive and healthier people. All right, so I appreciate you all very much for tuning in. I love all your feedback. Please keep it coming and we will see you again soon.